are here for the disrupting pattern lecture series that you know, of course, and we have this open talk that is in presence and, of course, online. Um, super happy, of course, because uh, this time there is uh, an illustrator, also an architect, we can say. <laughs> And um, I do the bureaucratic part, and that yes, of course. For, I'm uh, so for happy that talk. you do it. <laughs> so, of course, you were born in Italy. Right now, you are living in Berlin, right? You have studied here in Milan, a polytechnic school. So you start yes. exactly as an architect, but then you follow your passion, that is drawings. Exactly. I ask him to present uh, his work because he have a completely particular point of view regarding the city and the space around us. Uh, he used to work, of course, uh, for different brands. He used to work also as a freelancer for uh, personal work. That is a yes. really good part. And um, some of the clients you work with, there is really a lot, is La Repubblica. So we have a magazine, newspaper, Cartier, Vanity Fair, Bonpiani, Rizzoli, theater, like uh, Piccolo Teatro di Milano, also Greenpeace magazine. So any kind okay, of brands. Because the important thing is try to maintain your point of view and pass a message to people. That's why uh, also we can say that you have a transdisciplinary approach, that is the approach of Domus, and that's why it's open to all uh, the masters. So thank you very much, Carlo. Thank we you can so start much, with, uh, with the talk, and then after we have a Q&A session, and so we can chat a little bit together. Grazie. Thank you so much. I really <laughs> thank you. I'm really happy to be here because I feel the creativity here and I am working with creativity. So uh, it's beautiful also to share what I do because I'm work, my work is exactly to share what I do because I don't keep everything in my drawers, but my work is to publish all the things that I, uh, that I realize. And uh, it's beautiful for me, it's important to start from the idea of the diamond. The diamond is um, a particular uh, character in ancient Greek culture that is, has a very important meaning for creative people because the diamond is, uh, let's say, uh, a kind of representation, uh, the metaphor of the destiny, the reason why we are on earth and we are living here, the best part of us. For ancient Greeks, um, it was like a kind of little, let's say, God living on your shoulders or inside on you and concentrating all the values, all the positive characteristics of you. Uh, so it's very important for me to discover your um, best skill, what, to, what you, you can do better uh, in your life. So the, the first place where you can find the diamond is in your childhood, uh, childhood, for example, in your drawings. This is a drawing I made when I was uh, between 11 and 12, uh, 11 and 12. <laughs> and, um, it was already possible to see many characteristics of my uh, work today. So if you have some drawings or something you made when you were very, very young, uh, you can go back and see and try to discover all these things that are so uh, fundamental, so basic for your work. It was a, a pirate island with many details and many different things, uh, animals, people, uh, sleeping, uh, prisoners, uh, and all those. So many, many things. It was all about fantasy, details, architecture. So everything was already uh, detectable in this uh, first work. Inspirations, of course, in the history of an artist or an illustrator are very, very important because at a certain point we need um, a booster, something that is pushing you to create something and is telling you how to um, go on and is giving you the energy. The first thing, um, uh, the, one of the, my first passions uh, I met as a child was architecture. And uh, the Pantheon in Rome was the temple I visited when I was eight years old. And I was so impressed by this incredible dawn with this uh, um, opening to the sky, 
uh, I remember the date, it was raining inside the temple and it was, it was amazing for me because the floor was like a basin and all the water was collected in the center of this floor. And as a child it was something so, what I've never seen um, a roof uh, open like this on purpose. So uh, when at the end of this visit I decided to be an architect because uh, I discover a kind of freedom also in projecting building uh, completely different from the other normal building we used to see every day. And the other big uh, encounter uh, in my life was with uh, Bruno Munari. I was uh, uh, just uh, uh, graduated in architecture at the Polytechnic of Milan and uh, I had a big honor to work with this great designer, teacher, professor, artist, and whatever. We, we cannot stop to define uh, Bruno Munari. Um, I have learned mainly creativity from Bruno Munari because um, creativity is something we don't consider so much every day. Also in school sometimes it's something that is a little bit hidden. And uh, when we are, for example, children, uh, we can be a little bit unlucky sometimes and meet professors or teachers who tell you, okay, now uh, you have to draw, I don't know, a sheep, you have to draw an horse or something. They give uh, a theme to develop, but they um, don't set you free. Uh, and it's very important to find a method, like Bruno Munari's method, to um, uh, be able to develop in a very free way um, your own creativity, and creativity is actually your diamond. After um, I was, over the years, I was working as an architect in Milan, I was building office buildings, and for me it was very hard because I, I had a big problem with bureaucracy in Italy. I realized that I was uh, creating drawing just for a 20% of, uh, of the whole uh, time of my working time. And uh, so at a certain point I really gave up and I decided to be just an illustrator. I already was uh, working as an illustrator with, with La Repubblica when I was younger. And um, I considered carefully everything. Uh, at the end, I, was, uh, I had also to go to psychotherapy to understand better myself, to tear out my diamond, and to understand what was my real passion. And I realized that uh, to be an illustrator means to um, work with your passion, so drawing, but at the same time, uh, you also need a content, and the content in this case was architecture, cities, uh, travels. Uh, so I was able, at a certain point in my life, uh, to put together all these passions in one, let's say, dream job, and create something that was able really to, to, to satisfy my diamond, the real part of myself. Um, this was a very important step in my career. It was. Um, uh, um, Moleskine Publishing called me uh, and they told me, okay, come, uh, come to Milan, come to our office. Um, I would like that you would be, could do something for us, uh, whatever you want. And they say, oh, what, it, it's incredible. It's very difficult that someone tell you, do whatever you want for us. So I decided to think about something that it was really a dream for me, the best for me. And I decided to put together this content, architecture, cities, and drawing. So my propos proposal was a book series about cities. So of course, uh, we started from Milan, because Moleskine is in Milan. In 2015, uh, we had the expo here. And so um, I started to present these storyboards to Moleskine and Publishing. And uh, you see, there are always these double pages with different things that are part of the real identity of Milan. Because as we start from our diamond as our real identity, I'm very interested in identity. Um, also, a city, if you want to uh, discover, to know really well a city, you have to dig, to deepen these cities 
until you find its identity. And so I started to consider cities like people. Every, every city is a person, and you can speak with the person, try to uh, hear to this person, and uh, listen to this person, and um, try to develop your impression about this person. Try, try to translate the speech that you have with this, uh, let's say, city, friend city that is in front of you with a cup of, uh, with a cup of coffee, and try to uh, translate all this speech in illustrations, in drawings. So these are the first um, sketches I made about Milan. You can recognize many things. Also, uh, design objects, for example, that are very, it's a very important part, as you know very well, of the uh, Milanese identity. And I started with the first book. This is I Am Milan. Then I went on with I Am London. We started this uh, book series, then I am New York. It's for, of course very beautiful because you can also travel a lot because it's very important to be there in person when you make all these sketches because you have to breathe the air of the city, you have to hear the noise of the city. If you are in Manhattan, for example, you have a continuous noise like being in a machine, boom, boom, boom. Every city uh, has different uh, smells, different noises. Uh, different uh, street furniture, uh, different street signs. Uh, it's, uh, the, the identity is not just uh, in architecture, but it also, for example, we will see later in uh, how people wear in these cities, the fashion that is typical of these cities. The line was always a very important start for me. Uh, at the very beginning of my work, when I decided to be um, an illustrator, I remember um, all uh, the teachings by uh, Bruno Munari, because Bruno Munari, for example, he made uh, in his workshops uh, one, of, uh, one exercise like this. So you have to take, um, uh, for example, a, a flat um, tip pen, a pencil, a pencil or, I don't know, uh, a pen, a normal pen, a brush, and trying to find out your line, your favorite line. So you proceed to create uh, many parallel lines, vertical lines like this, and at the end you can find the line that is your tool, your own tool, and uh, you can, it's, it seems really silly, it's a little bit stupid, but it's really useful uh, to find your real line, and maybe you can do it even uh, in the digital world, uh, on a tablet, on a digital tablet, for example, because also there you can uh, try to uh, realize different lines. And so I started to use these lines that are, uh, I realized by rotting pen, that is a, a technical pen. Uh, in the past, uh, architects used a lot these rotting pens on, uh, tracing paper on transparent paper. And uh, yes, this is uh, the line I decided to use uh, through this exercise. This is uh, a former uh, brewery in London. This is, you know very well what is this, the Galleria uh, in Milan. This is from the book I Am Milan. And also this, is, uh, this has been made by uh, hand and then scanned. And then uh, mm, I decided to work a little bit on the lights. And everything is on a different layer. For example, the people you see there in the rain, they are on a different layers. It's like somehow uh, working on a stage. They are the characters of this uh, drama or comedy or whatever. And uh, uh, the background, the scene, is the gallery. I, mm, most of the time, I consider my illustrations like a theater, uh, as an Italian, or like an opera scene. This is the gallery inside, still here with this ink line. This is Venice. This is a very, very big uh, work I made for um, uh, an event in a palace in, a palace in uh, Venice, so it's six meters uh, wide. This is Milan. Everything also here uh, have been created on different 
uh, layers, like this building, for example, in foreground, and then the other buildings here, here, and here are on different layers, because I like to play a little bit when I have these drawings in Photoshop to shift on the right, on the left, to play with them. And this is always very important for the clients, because when I delivery, uh, deliver one of these um, files, because at the end they are files, maybe the client can say, uh, I would like to, um, I don't know, get rid of something I don't like. I would like to shift something on the, to the left or to the right. And it's still possible. Otherwise, I should go back and draw everything again. So it's very important for me to, to use layers in Photoshop. This is Paris, uh, it's another view of a city. All the monuments are exactly in this position compared to the central uh, Place de Vosges, that is a zenithal view here. Um, and with this drawing, for example, by using this simple line, uh, I wanted to show that every city is uh, a planet on, um, on its own. Uh, Paris, of course, is a planet they have uh, a very special slang compared to the land. Uh, and uh, they have uh, a, a behavior that is different. They have um, a vision of the world that is different compared to other cities, other kind of fashion, other kind of everything. Architecture is a, a unique planet. Layers, as I told you. Um, it doesn't go on. OK, it doesn't work. Um, are so important. Also here we see something that is colorful. Uh, in this case, this is a work I made for um, MTA um, in New York, that is a Metropolitan uh, Transportation uh, um, Authority. And you see that uh, in this case, uh, the city is expanding itself also underground. Normally we see the city outside, but of course here you can read many different um, floors underground. I went to see the uh, metro in, uh, in New York and I had to consider also how uh, the, is the fashion there, how the people are dressed, uh, in the underground, uh, all, the, uh, all the differences they, they show, and it was uh, really um, a nice work. And uh, the MTA sent me all the models of these trains because I had to depict exactly these trains as they are these models of the trains. Um, yeah, it was a, a very, very funny work with a lot of fantasy because if you see here, you have a crocodile a crocodile is a part of uh, some kind of legend uh, in New York. They thought that there are crocodiles uh, in the underground. Here again, layers. I made many different, uh, many different drawings. This is another district in New York near uh, the Flatiron building. And these are water tanks uh, on, the, on the buildings. Uh, and so, for example, in this case, I made sketches of these water tanks. And then uh, I scan just these sketches. Then I scan on separate uh, piece of papers other elements like this sketch, this building behind it, the other building behind. So there is a dialogue between foreground and background. And uh, also here, once I have everything in the digital world, uh, in Photoshop, I can work with these things and uh, decide every time a different position. Because it depends if you are on a balcony and you try to observe this uh, cityscape, everything change if you move your head. We are used to see um, our famous uh, Renaissance Italian art uh, as uh, seen from a window. The frame is like a window and everything is just seen by uh, a person that is standing there still in front of this window. But for example, in uh, Asian culture, in Chinese or in Japanese culture, you don't have this uh, still perspective with one vanishing point. But if you see one of these Japanese prints, for example, or Chinese prints, you can see that there are many different 
um, vanishing points. It's like you see a film, it's not like that, but you have many different, uh, let's say, pictures in one big picture. So, this is another uh, case where I use, this is a print, it's not a drawing, um, because I made every line, every uh, row houses, or every, every, let's say, block on a different uh, piece of paper. And then uh, in Photoshop, I decided to put one on the other to create this perspective. So it was able, for example, to get rid of this or to erase this or to change them somehow. This is the city in London in St. Paul's Cathedral. Uh, always using the same line created by rotting pen. And this is the same color with color that also here are on different layers. So also all the shadows that are a transparent layer is, um, according to my method, uh, a different layer that I can change. So I also can change light. I also can change um, uh, the atmosphere of the time during the day. It's a very long process, of course. This is not very clever because maybe when you have to do uh, an illustration for a newspaper and then need this illustration in two days and sometimes also in a few hours and unfortunately sometimes it's the weekend so you have to stop if you want to do it and dedicate yourself to the weekend time. Um, it's, it's, of course this method is very long but now I'm a little bit uh, faster uh, because after many years I have learned what, how to do and I found out a trick to be faster and I will tell you. Uh, this is perspective, of course. Uh, uh, we were speaking about perspective before. Uh, it's very important when you show cities, uh, of course, because cities are made by buildings and they are made by many different perspectives, like in this case or in this case, this is just a sketch, but the perspective here is very important because uh, it is the protagonist of this sketch. This is a very simple sketch. You, we have just um, a building made in watercolors, and then we have this very rough doodle, this bridge uh, in the foreground, but it's uh, just these lines are able to describe the distance from this building to the viewer. Here, this is a fantastic sketch. It was uh, just an idea. Um, uh, it, it doesn't exist this place, of course. It's New York, but it's in New York just uh, as I see New York. Um, it was uh, um, uh, an attempt to find the identity of New York by um, putting in just on one page many different elements that are contributing to create this identity, like very particular signs that you can find just in New York, the traffic lights, uh, street lights, and uh, iconic building over there. These buildings, these skyscrapers, are not all together there, of course. It's just a fantastic way to see. And of course, uh, perspective is a very important element because I consider perspective um, uh, a very strong characteristic when you have to describe city. This is uh, uh, in Williamsburg, uh, New York. And I use a lot of transparency. We will see later what is transparency for me. You see that many things are just sketched here and you can see all the things behind because these are just the, all these lights, all this technical stuff um, is made just as sketches, very fast sketches. And this is the same uh, sketch colored where I decided to add trains and uh, also a section of this train with people inside. Very typical New Yorkers. If you um, go closer, you could uh, see, count, and, uh, uh, and see and meet these people inside. Uh, this train. Also here, as you see, the perspective is very important. Um, in this case, uh, I decided to keep all the colors stronger when they are closer uh, to the viewer and lighter, just like um, behind the mist, behind the fog over there. This is something you can find, for example, we have learned from 
uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci used to describe the landscape like this. When you have hills very far away, the, the color is very light because the density of air is stronger and stronger, of course. When you have a hill in this landscape closer to you, it is more defined, you can read it better, you can see it better. And also in this case, uh, perspective is a, a very important part of this uh, illustration. I use also these cables in the sky to subline uh, the perspective. Of course, I could say for every illustration we don't have the time because it would be maybe also boring, but I could say a lot of things because, for example, all this part, uh, it's uh, working like a mirror and uh, it is, of course, another layer. It's everything, it's separated. This taxi is a layer, the other van is another layer, everything. So it's just, it's really a big work. And also all the cables are other layers. So it's, uh, it's crazy somehow. I work a lot during the night because uh, I, don't have, I don't have telephone calls. I can go ahead and uh, nobody can stop me. This is another case where perspective is very important. Um, this is a bridge uh, in New York, Queensboro. And uh, it's beautiful in cities to um, to draw bridges, like in this case, London, uh, because bridges are for architects and uh, in general have been always considered just like something magical because they don't have um, continuous basement, but they are like somehow floating in the air. We have, uh, we, uh, in the ancient time, Roman called the emperor for the part or his um, religious, uh, let's say, uh, management uh, role, uh, pontifex. And also we today call pontifice the pope. Because uh, pontifex means originally the one who is able to create bridges. Because all the engineers who were cre able to create bridges uh, were considered somehow uh, like magicians, people connected uh, with gods, with something magical, because it was so difficult technically to create bridges compared to normal buildings. This is another perspective. Uh, of course, New York has very, very uh, long and far perspectives with very, very far vanishing points. People are always very important to describe. You cannot, it's very difficult to, um, to depict New York without people because it's always overcrowded. And, uh, and this is interesting because I realize, of course, speaking about perspective also here, uh, this dramatic perspective is a very important part of this illustration. Uh, otherwise, it will be quite flat. Um, but it's interesting because this museum, the Guggenheim Museum, um, it's something that here I decided not to draw. We, don't, we have just these lines here, but here is white, is uh, the white page, the white piece of paper, and I just made by pencil this shadow here and here, but you see there is no roof, nothing, it's just a few lines, we are speaking about a few lines made by uh, watercolored and then scanned and uh, um, re-elaborated inside a Photoshop uh, program. Also here we have this perspective with the Empire State Building and people and shadows and once again everything is on different layers. And I like very much to use this sketchy lines, not to go too much into the details because it's, it's going to be too boring sometimes. Details, there are another part of my language, I prefer to say language and style. Um, you see this, this is the spire in uh, the Empire State Building and it's actually full of antennas for uh, handies, for, for uh, mobiles 
Um, it, it's incredible because, because you cannot see it when you are there because they are so small and um, it's incredible. It's like a forest when you are close by. This is a sketch uh, about Times Square in New York and this is the final work that was also animated later and you can see many things that you can realize that you are really in America. You, have, you realize at the end that in the mirror, in the rear mirror, you can see Mickey Mouse that is the passenger of this taxi. This is Berlin, seen from a bar for uh, Goethe Institute. Also here the details are very important. Of course these are big poster. In this case it's very big so you can discover many many things and uh, uh, details uh, for me are very important as you can uh, as you have seen already in the first um, drawing I have shown you before. Transparency is another um, way I like very much to show cities uh, because cities are made by buildings that are um, hiding the other buildings behind. So in this case we are in Via Torino uh, in Milan and this is a wonderful church created by uh, Bramante, San Satiro and Santa Maria presso San Satiro. Um, but we have these two buildings in front of it. So I decided to show this church, the facade of this church also behind, and I turned uh, these buildings as a transparent building, into transparent building. It's quite strange because we, we are not used to see a transparent cities, but it's like, uh, it's a, more about the time. It's just like if I consider two different moments of a visit, when I was in the street and I was inside the little square in front of the church. And so if I combine this different time, I can find, uh, I can see at the end this vision in my mind. This is a rather sketch. Uh, this is uh, in Porta Romana, Scalo di Porta Romana. And this is the final where I add, decided to add more uh, layers and to use once again this idea of transparency, because here we have a building, but I decided to describe this building just through very fast lines, in this case, uh, orange lines, to create uh, a stronger uh, contrast with the other colors. And also the cars, the cars normally are moving, so somehow they are there, but also they are not there anymore uh, after a while. So I decided in this case, to, to do them less, uh, less massive, but transparent, because they are moving. And shadows, of course, are very important. Sometimes shadows can describe alone uh, something, one building. For example, on this side, we have just a very fast, rough sketch, and it's just the shadow that is describing the line, the silhouette of this building. But of course, through light and, and shadows, you can describe a particular moment of, of this uh, city during the day. You see that everything is quite sketchy and I used also, I, I tend to be uh, somehow more sketchy with more and more, I, I pay attention to details, but at the same time, this is the trick to do everything faster. I uh, just use my first sketch. So I don't trace the sketch with the ink on the, on the pencil, but I found that somehow the sketch can be uh, fresh, can, have, uh, can, can express uh, a spontaneity that you cannot find in the final illustration that sometimes is to somehow make up. Also here, shadows are very important. This is a, uh, a fantasy uh, about the Guggenheim Museum where uh, the artworks are living during the night when nobody is there. And this is um, a book I presented just a few days ago, uh, Interne di una psicoterapia, Interiors of a Psychotherapy, um, where uh, once again shadows and uh, light are very important 
because in this case, in these uh, eight drawings I made for this book, um, you start your path in your psychotherapy and of course you start from a situation that is somehow um, in the obs obscurity because you, you go to the psychotherapy the first time because you have problems, you don't feel well. And so uh, I started from, uh, in this research of your identity uh, and your wellness, um, uh, I decided to use this uh, ray of light to describe uh, this um, uh, shift to a better situation. And the better situation is very sunny, it's full of light. So you start from somehow um, a contrast between light and darkness. And I go on where everything is a little, here the light is more artificial somehow. Of course it's full of uh, metaphors, so it's, uh, it would be very long to describe all this. Uh, illustration are completely crazy, but they have a meaning on the psychological side. Psychological side. Also, this is a lapsus, for example. But the light every time is more and more and more. You see also the shining tiles here because the light is coming from this window. So also describing interiors means speaking about cities because, of course, cities. Uh, have a lot of interiors. More light, more light, more light, also here light, and of course every time um, I like to put um, pieces of designs I love particularly, like this from Ettore Sozza's, this Ultra Fragola, this mirror, or uh, this lamp, Tolomeo by Michele De Lucchi, um, and many other things. And this is the last illustration where you have the full light of the summertime and you have the need at the end of the psychotherapy to go back to life. So to go outside and afford your new life. People are also very important to describe cities because I told you before that uh, to consider the different ways uh, people were in every city uh, are very important because they are part of the identity of the city and also the colors uh, are changing in every city. In some city, for example, I noticed that they were uh, mostly in black. In other cities tend to, to be more colorful somehow. So it's very important to observe these things in the city. You can see all these people uh, in London, in Soho, uh, more somehow closer. I made these people just with watercolor and I decided to scan them. Here all is in London. This was a typical coat I've seen in London. In London they are very creative, I think. In other cities they follow more a standard fashion. In other cities they are very, very creative. And these are people in uh, Central Park in New York. In this, case, in, in this case, I decided to use um, a kind of style that is more connected with comics and pop art because New York is a very important city. Of course, it was shaped uh, by pop art and so somehow these characters are some more pop. It was very, I always have a lot of fun. It's important to have fun when you illustrate, when you work because it means that everything is going to the right direction because uh, otherwise something is wrong. When you start to be a little bit bored and you see, mm, you feel that if something is wrong, there is the final result could be not so satisfying. The unfinished is for me very important because uh, most of the city are always developing themselves, they are actually unfinished and the, the sketch is the tool, for me, the most important tool to describe this uh, um, situation that is never completely finished. This is another sketch I made for Molteni um, in Milan. This is crazy because uh, there are buildings in inside this architectural studio and uh, 
the furniture are outside. This is uh, um, Aldo Rossi studio in, uh, in Milan. Uh, they have exactly this window and these uh, elements that are typical from Aldo Rossi paintings and drawings. And this is the Cimitero Monumentale, Monumental Cemetery in Milan. Um, here, step by step, I was able to discover, rediscover the importance of using sketches instead of final illustrations. So it was, uh, for me, really a big pleasure to uh, realize that, okay, my work is finished now. For me, it's fresh, it's perfect. Uh, it tell, tells me exactly what I wanted to uh, express and uh, I don't have to trace everything with an ink line so I save a lot of time so it was, it was one, the trick, one of the tricks I used to, to save time but always keeping a good quality of work. And this is another sketch I made just two weeks ago uh, describing for uh, um, an advertising campaign in Istanbul also here, everything was on different layers, even smokes, uh, even shadows, uh, the mosque behind the other mosque and everything. So, But it's all uh, just pencil made. So it's a sketch, this is Las Vegas. I made partly in pencil, partly in inks, especially this signs. This is London. Also, this is a sketch. This is New York. With many typical things describing uh, the identity of New York. And once again, it's very important to be there, to be in the street, to depict everything. It's very, uh, I think you could understand the difference uh, between something that it was made uh, considering just some photos you can find in the street view or in the internet and to be really there. It's completely different. This is a mix I made between, uh, this is for the, um, uh, a German newspaper, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, um, and this is a mix between a sketch, that is this part, the carpet, the seats, uh, the pictures on the wall, everything is just a sketch I made. And then I decided to color it, to use shadows, once again the importance of shadows, and then to use ink and something, something more defined uh, to describe this transparent, another thing that I use often, this transparent table and uh, um, chairs to create more contrast. And fantasy. Fantasy is very important. This, uh, this is an illustration I made for Repubblica uh, to speak about uh, um, the book fair in Turin. And Turin uh, is a city that has very particular uh, building and palaces and there are exactly uh, like this, with this kind of windows uh, and uh, architectural um, characteristics that are typical just of uh, Turin, but uh, it was nice to, to uh, give you the idea that Turin is very connected with books, especially in this time of the year. Fantasy here, this is from uh, uh, Italo Calvino, Le Città Invisibili, that is, well, of course, a book every architect knows. Um, a lot of fantasy also here, and a combination between sketches and ink lines. Um, it was very nice to create this, and uh, uh, yes, it's probably full of uh, psychological interpretation, and, and I don't know. Also here was very nice to work on different layers, because you can combine in different combination all this element, architectural element. And also there is a kind of collage because this is a page with the line of a notebook, for example, because I made this, uh, this building on a notebook page and I decided to cut this page like this, scan it and put inside the illustration. This is just um, a fast cage I made 
and um, yes, it was it was uh, fun. It was like to take uh, a sketches notebook to cut all the pages and put everything together. In also here, I used uh, fantasy to describe the energy uh, of New York City. Here you see the shadow of this panther roaring. Uh, on, uh, among these uh, skyscrapers, and I wanted to express this idea of big energy. Here is another uh, fantastic view of the city. It was a very warm summer, so I needed a swimming pool. I made it like this. This is my kitchen, and uh, I imagine my, my kitchen uh, in Berlin, like in a tropical situation, so completely different from Berlin. And it was very nice to use, once again, transparency, um, light, shadows, colors, and everything here, once again, is on different layers. A client asked me to create um, a portrait of Dante Alighieri, and I decided to use the city because I speak about cities and architecture, and I am uh, specialized in this somehow. Uh, and so I decided to use the city, in this case, the Florence uh, of the time of Dante Alighieri to describe his face, because Florence was very important, of course, of course for him, and it's very deep, it was a very deep part of his identity. Here you see all these devils flying away from, from the head and actually describing the hood, uh, Dante, Dante, Alighieri, Dante Alighieri's hood. Here you have a field, but actually they are describing the vest of Dante Alighieri. And back to Munari in the last years, I went back to consider Munari's method in teaching um, uh, creativity. And uh, I create this uh, notebook for um, Moleskine Foundation. Um, and uh, um, I decided to use this notebook, not just uh, the base for our sketches and drawings, but in this case, the notebook is the protagonist uh, so you can see that the notebook itself, it was cut and uh, it's the city somehow. You can open this Japanese uh, kind of um, notebook and see all the city at the end. With a skyscraper uh, coming out, exploding uh, out from the pages. And this is according to Bruno Munari's method when I do some uh, workshop for children. I decide, for example, to take a blank page and rip it off in a random way. So you have the white page here. You have this random shape. And every, uh, every child can decide to, to interpret it in a different way this strange shape. It could be uh, a mountain, for example. It could be the face of a, of a, of a snake. I decided, for example, on myself to do, to do a lion, but it could be many, many different things. And then in this workshop, we developed this um, uh, browsing the pages uh, in different ways. We decided to create a city, for example. Step by step. The other thing that is very interesting for an illustrator is that your images can be used for different purposes. For example, in this case, uh, we have a bus in Berlin. They asked me to, uh, to, to decorate completely with illustrations for children. It's 150 square meters that I made. Uh, in a digital file, of course, I created a digital file, and this is the film uh, they uh, put on the, on, the, on the bus, of course. It was a very, so this is a kind of usage. Another kind of usage, for example, here in Milan, I create these drawings that is actually a billboard. You see there that it's 23 meters by 23 meters, so it's a completely another kind of dimension. Or, for example, postcards. 
So these are the same illustration that I create, I produce in a, on a very high resolution, so they, they can be adapted to different sizes. And here we have uh, New York again, a very pop New York, and it should be animated because we have many, uh, you see, for example, uh, helicopters, but Superman there, and then uh, Godzilla, they're coming out. Because New York is also this, you could not do something like that for a European city, for example. New York was a stage uh, in many films, in a, a popular culture, for this kind of tales. It's going on again, again, again. This is an animation we created for, from my illustrations, using the layers of my illustrations for a big um, animation uh, that is um, shown in, uh, at Malpensa Airport in Milan. So it's like a welcome uh, for the people who are coming to Milan in Malpensa. We created this with uh, Milan Airport and uh, Digital Culture Center in Milan. This is again the same. And here again, this is another view um, of Milan. I cannot show uh, to everybody um, all the, the film because uh, it is possible just uh, at Malpensa Airport, so I have to choose uh, among a few shots. This is or also this one. This is San Lorenzo, San Lorenzo alle colonne. And the last one, this one, you can uh, realize the size of this presentation uh, in Malpensa. So we close with Milan, and I am available for your question to reply from. Thank you.